on September 4th of this year, Priscilla Presley's side of the story has finally been shared on the big screen. Welcome back to Beyond the Screen. I'm your host Dana, and today we are talking about 10 dark Elvis Presley secrets revealed in the Priscilla movie. At number 10, we have how Priscilla was only 14 when they met. We know Elvis has a knack for being eccentric and a real crowd pleaser, but when he is a 26 year old man who had already begun establishing his career, started dating the 14 year old Priscilla. It should have caused way more outrage than it did. In 1959, there was over a 10 year age gap between them and she was legally still a minor. Her parents weren't too fond of the thought of her daughter dating a literal grown adult who happened to be a musician, but they begrudgingly let it slide because he was rich and famous. Priscilla and her family were living in Germany at the time, and the only reason they met was because Elvis was drafted there with the US military, seeing as he was enlisted in the height of his prime. So not only did he have an established music career, but he was old enough to be a US soldier when she was just going into high school. To add to all of this, when he was sent back to the states, he up and left her with no contact and barely so much as a goodbye. This brings us to our next point, about how he was a terrible partner. Before before he and Priscilla were married, he knew exactly who he was, what he looked like, and the effect he had on young women. So in a very scummy fashion, he would often create narratives to convince women to spend the night with him, whether it be for physical intimacy or emotional intimacy. Actress Sybil Shepard said that she had a brief affair with him and she was pretty disappointed. She even claimed it was highly overrated. According to Priscilla, however, he was skilled in every way except for the actual deed itself. She was raised Catholic, so maintaining purity before marriage was a must, and he abided by that, but barely. After they were married, he gave Priscilla a child, Lisa Marie, and he refused to have any sort of intimacy with her after she was born, and that is where the marriage began to fall apart. Apparently up until his passing, he needed to have a woman in his bed, whether or not he was performing or whether or not he was married. This leads us to point number eight, about how often he really cheated on her. I mean, when you're that rich and famous, he has, he used that as an excuse to justify his actions, which is already an awful thing to do. It began when they actually started dating, seeing as he was mucking around with 14 year old Priscilla, he also had a spicy thing with his private secretary, who was only 19 at the time. He would often bounce around from woman to woman just to feel something different every night. And of course, he could get away with it because he's Elvis. When he left Germany and went back to Tennessee, he got into a short lived relationship with Anita Wood, and she discovered he would often have wild nights with young girls. She even found a letter from Priscilla begging him to move her to the state so they could be together again. This is when Anita saw behind the curtain and she left him shortly after. But because Priscilla was young and naive, she would have been willing when Elvis introduced new players to the game, if you catch my drift. His excuse for his unfaithful actions was that he was famous and that's just who he was, and she could accept him for who he was or leave. In a healthy relationship, that isn't a position you should ever be in, famous or not. At number seven, we have his use of substances. It's no secret that Elvis has severe substance issues. It was the 60s, so even soda pop had substances mixed in. Linda Thompson was one of his past relationships, and in her autobiography, she went into detail about what it was like being with him while he was struggling. Apparently while they were together, she had saved his life multiple times because she found him unconscious face down on the floor or having taken too much prescription medication. She said he felt like he couldn't be harmed by the medications he was taking, even if it was far too much. She said that he had over a dozen different medication bottles on his nightstand when they went to Vegas for their first trip together. It got to a point where he would take an absurd amount of sleeping pills to sleep through the entire day so he would be rested enough to stay up all night. All the medication really did was have a hand in his passing. At number six, we have how Priscilla was a co-producer of the movie. It isn't a dark Elvis secret, but it makes the amount of stuff he did in the movie all the more haunting. She wanted to make sure that it was both accurate and dramatic uh, at the same time, and so that she could recreate scenes that accurately represented her time with Elvis. Priscilla's book, Elvis and Me, gave very good details about the situation she was put in, and she had no fear dragging his name through the mud, considering everything he put her through. The most interesting part is that when 
the casting director for the movie did an interview with Lisa Marie, Elvis and Priscilla's daughter, she didn't see what Priscilla was talking about, and she thinks her mother made him seem way more awful than he actually was, and that her book was vengeful and hateful, and Lisa Marie couldn't understand why. Lisa Marie actually had issues very similar to her father's, so it makes sense why she would be so blind to his personal life problems. At number 5, we have How Often Elvis Left. Now this one is less shocking than some of the others, which is why it comes right in the middle of our list. We knew he left Priscilla high and dry when she was a teenager, but even when they were living together, he would often be gone for months at a time, just to be home for a few days, to leave again. This took a serious toll on Priscilla's mental health. He would leave for many different reasons. Sometimes it was tours, sometimes it was for movies, other times for interviews, but she was at home alone all the same. Well, at one point, she decided she had enough and made a surprise appearance in Los Angeles where he was filming at the time. Instead of him being happy and welcoming his wife to the set, he threatened her and sent her away, and said that she needed to accept that that was who he was. This should have been her breaking point, but instead she still married him, which led to a very mentally damaging relationship that only lasted a few more years before she decided it was time to leave him. At number 4, we have how Priscilla was barely legal when they were married. Now, I've mentioned a few times in the list already that she was only 14 when they met and dated for the first time, but when he finally paid her to move in with him, she was still in high school. Her parents were very against the idea of her moving in with him across the world, but reluctantly they agreed, and she finished her final year in high school in Tennessee. But because she was living a very lavish and fancy lifestyle, being Elvis's girlfriend, she barely managed to pass her final year. They got married in 1976, which would have made Priscilla 22 at the time. She had enough time to graduate and get into the groove of adulthood. The following year, she found out she was pregnant with Elvis's child, and like I mentioned before, that was one of many stakes in their marriage. She was definitely too young to be married and have kids, and it affected her mental and emotional state as well as her physical well-being. At number 3, we have how a book was linked to his passing. In 1977, three of Elvis's former personal bodyguards got together to write a book titled Elvis, What Happened? It was basically a tell-all memoir about Elvis, and all of the shady deals and things he was involved with. And it gave a deeper look into his substance use, and who he really was as a person. Well, the book was released just two weeks before his passing, so people theorized that he caught wind of the book's release, and couldn't cope with people seeing how awful he really was. Before his passing, he actually tried to stop the book from being published, by attempting to bribe the publishers. They refused the offer because because they knew the book would make waves across the world. Apparently, when he found it, it was released, his heart problems got worse, seeing as he already had high blood pressure, which didn't help with the other bodily issues he was enduring at the time. People think this contributed to his passing, but that was never confirmed, considering he had a whole pharmacy in his system when he passed. At number 2, we have how he wanted to act in serious movies. It's not nearly as dark as some of the other things on the list, but it's definitely an interesting point to make. Elvis got his big break as a musician, as everyone knows, but he was also an actor for a while at the height of his stardom. He often played in summer beach movies or comedies, but he really wanted to get into playing more serious and genuine roles. His manager, Tom Parker, didn't take him where he wanted to be, and he felt like he led him astray. However, Parker did hold up to his end of the bargain. He promised Elvis he would make him millions, which he did, whether it be for the right or wrong reasons. When Priscilla was helping work on the film, she said the director did a great job of recreating Elvis the way she saw him, and how he really was from her point of view. The last we heard, Priscilla and Tom Parker are on good terms now, all things considered. And last but not least at number 1, we have having his mirrors changed. This point makes number 1 because of the amount of concern it should have raised. When he was still young and married to Priscilla, he had a Beverly Hills home that was far from welcoming. He and his guy friends would invite masses of dancers and showgirls to have nights with them. But it wasn't just questionable adult fun, Elvis had installed two-way mirrors in a lot of the walls of the bedrooms so he could spy on the other people he invited without them knowing. And he also kept an eye on anyone who was in the house. Priscilla decided it was finally time to put her foot down and say they needed to be changed. Well, after his many, many affairs, he did change them to be one-way mirrors, 
but it was so he could have full privacy in his own home with no opportunities for anyone to secretly be filming him or be spying on him. How hypocritical. At the end of the day, his life wasn't all it was cracked up to be. And with the release of the movie Priscilla, we are getting a better look into how he really was as a person instead of just being the character we see on screen and on stage. Well, that is all the time we have for today, but if you liked the video, you can leave a like down below, and if there was anything you think we should have added, you can let us know in the comments. I have been your host Dana, and this has been Beyond the Screen. Thank you so much for watching.